Welcome in to Movement to Norfolk, and we are going to be discussing today live with you in a Q&A, eight things to consider before moving or before buying in Nasman River Estates. If you have not yet seen that video where we did a neighborhood tour on Nasman River Estates, where we went over that whole community and talked about the first phase and the second phase that's actually been built out in Nasman River Estates over in Suffolk, Virginia. Please check out that video. We're going to link it down below for you. But also, definitely, you want to watch this in, in, in conjunction with that because we're going to get into a lot of information about what is going on. We had some very good questions that was fed to us uh, over the last couple of days, and now we're going to hit you with a live Q&A on these answers uh, and more. And if you have other things that you want to hear about in the chat, definitely let us know as well. But we're going to get started right now. If you don't know who I am, my name is Craig Houston. And I'm with the Moving the Norfolk team. And we are always looking forward to getting phone calls, emails, texts, and even our favorite video calls and going one-on-one with each and every one of you every single day that we get an opportunity to, whether you're listening to this on podcast or you're viewing this on YouTube, we are here for you 24-7. Every day of the week, we're here to help you no matter what, whether that's in uh, two weeks or 120 days from now, we're still going to be able to help you make a smooth move to Norfolk, Virginia and the surrounding communities like Suffolk, Virginia. So let's get directly into it. The first question up is, what are the key amenities and attractions near Nasman River Estates? So what we're going to do is we're going to jump in directly on these questions and get started. So first of all, if you have not yet seen anything dealing with uh, Nasman River Estates, we're going to break it down for you here and kind of give you a full outline of exactly what's going on in the community. So first of all, this is where Nasman River Estates is at, okay? And then you actually want to know a little bit more than that. You want to see uh, what's going on in the community a bit. So what we're going to do is actually show you exactly some of the things that I feel are amenities that you would like to see. And the first one up is Sleepy Hole Golf Course, okay? Sleepy Hole Golf Course and Sleepy Hole Park is actually one of those uh, amenities that I believe is going to be a lot of things for those golf enthusiasts that's going to give them something to actually look forward to on the weekends and things of that nature because it's right here is going to give you access with a fishing, a, a, a fishing pier and then also having just a golf course over there over the, the beachy house uh just being in that area as well it's going to give you a lot of amenities that we talked about we highlighted this in the nasman river estates video so if this is one of those things that you're more interested in let's just take a look a deep dive directly into what's going on in this community a part of the area right so you have playgrounds you have that fishing pier you have boat ramps here it's so much things to do in this part of the community that a lot of people think this is not uh an ideal spot for a park, but it actually is undervalued in my opinion because there's not a lot of uh, frequency to this park by the citizens in the community, making this an ideal place for those who know about it and understands how they can get around the community. And this is a hidden gem in my opinion. So other um, amenities that you have around here, obviously is going to be other parks and things of that nature. But one of the major amenities is that the school is right, a high school is right down the street, um, a short commute uh, from their Nasman River Estates. And that's going to be here as well too. You've got Nasman River High School, which we'll talk about here a little bit more in detail um, as we get to it because, okay, so as we talk about it a little bit, because one of the things about this is that we had another question that came up on Nasman River High School and the rest of the schools. So when we get there, we will break that down for you as well, too. So let's look over into other amenities that people may want to see actually in the community. And some of those are going to be, uh, basically, if you're going down Portsmouth Boulevard here, we're going to bring it up a little bit here. So you're going, this is where the Nasman River Estates is. You come back up here to Driver, and then you're actually on Nasman Parkway and you're starting to make your way a bit here. You actually have a whole lot more amenities coming this way towards the I-664 corridor, which we'll talk about transportation as well here in a minute. But that gets you over to access on Portsmouth Boulevard, where there's a One Life Fitness Center here. Uh, we'll just uh, put this so you can see it. We'll highlight that. You got a uh, One Life Fitness Center here. Then you also actually have 
uh, uh, Target here, a Bath and Body Works, a Chesapeake Square Mall. Not a great mall, in my opinion, but it does have amenities for people who are searching out for things in the community to do in this area. One of the things that will be always said, which could be a con for Nasma River Estates and Suffolk overall, is that there is not a lot of amenities there in the city that people can take advantage of. But let's just talk about shopping. And some of these things are underrated, in my opinion. Like, where can you dine at? Where can you get coffee at? Where can you just make a quick, short commute to find things that you really need to get in a, in, in a squeeze? But Because most of the times we live in a community now where people just want to order everything and have it delivered directly to the door. But starting out, just understanding what's in your community can make a world of difference if you just understand What's a short commute away from you? Everything in this area is about a 10 to 15 minute commute. Depends on what part of Nasman River Estates that you stay in, because obviously there's the creek at Nasman River Estates. And then that's Nasman River Estates, phase one and phase two. But you obviously got your Starbucks here. you got your Target here, like we talked about. you got the movie theater here, Cinemark, Chesapeake Square, uh, XD. Now, this is, to me, the best movie theaters in, in, in the seven cities are AMCs which one is lo located in Virginia Beach, and then the other one is located in Hampton Town Center in Hampton, Virginia. But And then you have the Evo Entertainment Center, which I think is uh, awesome as well, too. Great experience. you got the luxury recliner chairs, delivery of food to your seats, um, the smaller theaters, so it's less crowded theaters, things of that nature. Those are the three best. But then you have the Cinemark, Chesapeake Square, and XD um, Theater here as well. It's not a bad theater at all. Five guys here. You got your Red Lobsters. You got your Zaxby's, your Chipotle, your Applebee's, your Chick Fil A. You got you got your Mexican restaurant, your Jalapenos. You definitely got your Plaza Azteca Mexican restaurant, your Home Depot here, and then you even have like Best Buy in this area as well too. So there's just a lot of amenities here, in my opinion, where these are mm -hmm. actually going to be ideal situations for you. How you doing, Antoinette? I hope to see, I hope that you're doing well. Glad to see you here. Uh, but you also know that we actually have to move on to our next question. So let's go ahead and do that real quick here uh, and talk about this a little bit more. But to me, the amenities are ideal and vast being in that part of Northeast Suffolk because it gives you that, uh, that easy access to the I-664 Portsmouth Boulevard area where you can see so many amenities where that's not tip, that's not really Suffolk. That's actually Portsmouth, but those it's so close, you might as well say that it's still Suffolk, really truly. But it has so many amenities for Nasman River Estates. Okay, so let's get into question number two. Can I provide an overview of the schools in the area and their proximity in the neighborhood? Which let's do that. We already identified right off the back um, the Nasman uh, Nasman River High School. So let's head back over here, okay? And let's just bring, I'm gonna bring it back up here for you real quick. So let's get over here, boom, boom, boom. All right, so we're gonna go back here and talk about this. We'll talk about, I, I answered a question about crime as well too. That we'll, that's a different question that we'll get to. I, I hear your opinion. I got that question. We're gonna lock in on that one as well too. So we'll talk about it here in a second. So let's see here. We're gonna go here. And really and truly, we're going to show you the uh, Nasma River High School is here. Uh, and then obviously the next two schools in this area that you want to pay attention to is going to be John Yeats Middle School and Northern Shores Elementary School. These are all B plus rated schools in accordance with niche.com. Uh, one of the things that I always like to tell individuals as they're making their own decisions about where to move at in the community uh, based on schools is definitely make sure that you do your own research because the reason why I say this is due to the fact that if you don't, you can always uh, make a mistake and a realtor being one, we really can't give you too much details on things about the community that we don't know personally because it'd be almost like steering, but one, and that's against fair housing. But the one thing that I will say is always read the comments, Definitely understand more than what the ratings show. Understand what the community is saying about the schools. I would even go a little bit lengthier in detail and say, I would actually want to meet with some of the faculty, call and get a tour of the school, uh, things of those nature, if that's what you really care about, because this is an important decision for not only you, but for your children, too, if you are going to have school age children and while you're moving to different communities. Always keep that in mind. Um, but like I said before, 
uh, all B plus rated schools. Um, this is actually when it comes to Suffolk, it's actually got only three high schools in the area, which Nasman River Services one as one of the major services for it. Kings Fork High School is actually more central. And then Lakeland is more a, a, a western portion of Suffolk and the central, the central south portion of Suffolk as well, too. So you actually have uh, only three high schools. I think that's actually going to change over time. Like I said, you got to think about it's not the population has not grown enough to where they probably would be a demand for another school. But I can see where there will be opportunities for this. As this could be one of the things that's a detractor for people when it comes to schools in the area. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and let's talk about crime while we're already here. Um, and let's go ahead and pull up the crime statistics as well, too. So we can talk about that just a bit here. I know a lot of people will, always be, will obviously say, hey, what is the crime stats looking like when it comes to Suffolk? And that is a great question to ask. And that's what we want to talk about here, too, since we're already on the subject of schools. Let's just get into what's going on with actual the ratings behind uh, the actual school district. I mean, the actual city as well over, uh, overall. So let me just zoom in here. OK, so. Let's see what just happened there that just disappeared. Boom. All right, here we go. So uh, what you'll see here, let's get your report up. Don't know what just happened. Okay, so that just, boom. All right, here we go. I don't know why I did that the first time. Here we, But here we go. So what you'll see here is that you have, obviously, the more purple area is going to be the most dangerous and the lighter purples are actually going to be the less safest crime areas that basically by rating. So in central Suffolk, what you'll see here, a lot of that dark rate is downtown, which um, most of the time in most communities and most cities, I don't know where you may be watching from, um, that may not be as bad as it may seem it's just based on the scale and i would not say you know make sure you always go into the details of what's going on in the communities and this is why i say you want to do a little bit more research just similar to what we talked about when it comes to schools because simply put when you're thinking about crime in an area you have to understand what is more uh going to what you're more prone to be at and like i said when you're looking at these suburbs and these subdivisions within the community you want to make sure that you're looking at those specifically and understanding what the crime details are there so if we was to say based on all around in every one of these seven cities there's going to be high concentrated areas of crime in, in more particular areas but then there's going to be less crime in other parts of those cities based on just basically on what's going on and how those cities are set up and how those subdivisions are set up so those are one of the things that you want to check out neighborhoodscout.com uh for statistics like that and they grade on a range on neighborhoodscout.com so just understand that too as you go into what's going on with the analytics behind it so the crime index shows that it's an 18 basically and that that is uh, based on a scale of one to 100, with 100 being the safest. So it's basically saying that it's safer than 18% of the U.S. neighborhoods. This is our opinion based by a neighborhood scout based on the details that they have. So you want to make sure you go into a little bit more and just understand exactly what they have to provide. OK, so we talked about crime. We talked about schools and we've already talked about exactly what is going on with the amenities in Nasman River Estates or around Nasman River Estates, comment down below. What are some of the things that you are actually considering below when it comes to making your move to Suffolk, Virginia, or any one of the surrounding cities of Norfolk as well, too? We're going to get into question number four. We're on question four now, right? So question number four is how accessible is Nasman River Estates to major highways or transportation options? So let's talk about that here for a second one of the things that i would say about transportation right from the jump is if you are one of those individuals who are looking to move to a city where commuting by public transportation is one of those things that you just need to have in your life and not really dependent on the vehicle suffolk virginia may not be for you and here's the reason why i'm just going to pull out the map just a bit so you can see but when i actually bring up Suffolk, Virginia, which I'm going to show you here in a second. I want to show you basically the, the how big Suffolk, Virginia really is when you take it into consideration. Okay, so here we go. Here, check this out. 
Suffolk is actually the largest city in actual Virginia, okay? And the largest city by land mass, I should say. By population, that would be Virginia Beach, but by land mass, this is all of Suffolk. So basically, you have this northern region of Suffolk here, and then you actually have all the way down to the North Carolina border of Suffolk as well, too. So you see how big this community is, and then it has like this 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 large this uh the Great Dismal Swamp as well, encompassing parts of the city as well too. So it makes it hard for there to be public transportation. As a matter of fact, there is a stat that says that only about one point six percent of the community in Suffolk actually use public transportation the way that it's set up now because it just is no way to make public transportation uh, accessible and easy to get you to the other seven cities. Like when you look at this map again, let's look at it right here. You'll see this is Suffolk. This is Chesapeake. Okay. This is Chesapeake here. This is Norfolk. This is Virginia beach. And then this portion over here where Western branch is as well. And it's Portsmouth. So, it's really hard to get into these areas for public transportation. So if that's something that you're looking for, you may want to consider um, basically looking into moving to a different city because that may be more optimal transportation for you. And if you was to ask my opinion on what would be the better transportation area for you, that would more likely be Norfolk or Virginia Beach. But a lot of people are moving west away from Norfolk and Virginia Beach uh, to like cities like uh, Suffolk. And eventually it was moving to, uh, down, down south to Chesapeake. But now that has started to get a little crowded for a lot of people as well. So they're moving to Suffolk, not only for home prices and for home lot size, but just to get away from the the the, the city life more. You know, they want, people want to have a little slower down uh, opportunities here, which we'll talk about that here in a second, because uh, one of the things that we already touched on was transportation. So talking about transportation, uh, you will see. Uh, that is just not a much here. So now one of the other things that you got to think about is toll roads, okay? So let's talk about toll roads as well too. So if you're going to be using any uh, a vehicle and you're going to be using certain transportation to get through uh, to Norfolk, Virginia Beach, or, or even to the peninsula side, which is Hampton, Newport News, Williamsburg, and the Hampton Roads area, one of the things that you got to consider as well is tolls, okay? Or you got to go through a tunnel, or you have to go over a bridge. There's no other way to get to any of these other areas without making those type of commutes if you do live in Suffolk. So one of the reasons why I bring that up is because I just want to show you, basically, if you are looking to move to Suffolk, you got to know exactly where you're going to be commuting from. So if we are looking at basically, let's see, we got, we're going to bring back up your Nazma River Estates, right? So that way I can kind of give you an idea exactly where that's at so let's just bring that back up real quick so nasma river estates is here right so what you'll see when it comes to nasma river estates is that first of all you're going to have to get on the the 125 heading back towards the 664 okay so basically here is where you're at you'll basically take the 125 and it'll take you back here to the 664 when you get to the 664 oh OK, so when you get to the 164, the 664, now you got a bigger opportunity here. Right. So now you've got so many opportunities at your disposal to make a commute here. What you will see is basically you will have uh, you can take 664 to actually 264, which is going to take you here to the Portsmouth right there. Now, the reason why I bring that up, because right here is where Portsmouth Naval Hospital is or you actually had the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard here as well too. But then also you have the 264 tunnel, which is a toll tunnel, okay? And which I should do here since we're already on the uh, on the conversation of uh, tolls. Let's bring up Easy Pass for Virginia and show you these rates because that's one of the things that you want to know too is how much the rates are. And you can either pay by plate, which I totally don't recommend, in my opinion, unless you just have no reason to ever go back towards Norfolk and Virginia Beach, you really don't want to pay uh, those pay by plate fees because those are outrageous in comparison to what just having uh, Easy Pass, having a little bit of money on it and understanding uh, exactly how much you're going to pay. So let's see if I can get you those fees here. So Easy Pass, Virginia fees, right? Easy Pass, Virginia fees. Let's do that. All right, so let's show you that. 
because you definitely want to know what those are when it comes to paying by plate or so. So let's get you those. Let's see, it is here. All right. What else? Sometimes they just don't make it easy to find certain things, but I got you. We're going to talk about those here. And the row, the fees are. Where did it just go? Uh, nope, 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 nope. Um, so they definitely just not even show it on the website now. Where did those fees go? I usually it took me there, but then it disappeared. That's crazy. Uh, where did it go? All right, anyway, I find it and I'll put it down in the link below in the description below. Obviously, it was here, but then it just disappeared on me when I go to this, this link and don't show. So I'll bring it back up for you and get that information to you. But really and truly, you want to load your uh, easy pass up as well, too, because you don't want to be just taking the easy pass, in my opinion, without having the, uh, some type of coverage. Because if you don't, you will pay a tremendous amount in fees just for using easy pass and not having easy pass. And that can be not what a lot of people would like to actually have to pay in my opinion. All right. So we'll talk about that and I'll link it down below. Once I find exactly where it's at uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the, in the show notes down below, I'll leave that for you. And then we'll talk about that a little bit more here in detail. So, but back to the main point that we was talking about here was just your commute, right? So this is the poor Smith. 264 taking it to Norfolk here. This will obviously be a commute, but then you can also take the Midtown, which the Midtown goes here, and it crosses over into Ghent in Norfolk as well, too. So here you can take it, and this will get you into Norfolk as well, too. And then if you wanted to go around, say, to directly over to Virginia Beach from Suffolk, Okay, so you basically, if you're in the creek at Nasman Rivers, you have another option to where you could take that same 264, right? Basically, here you could take 264. Oh, it did it again. So basically, you'll come up here, then you can make the commute to 264 through Portsmouth Town, and then this could take you all the way to the ocean front to the beach. Okay, or you can make the nice commute around as well from that same point going around the hot what they call the high rise bridge okay and the high rise will take you here and then basically you're back on the same area as well too going towards um going towards virginia beach as well too so if that's something that you're looking to do now i will talk about here a little bit more let's go into our next question because that's going to be a question here that i want to make sure we talk about so we are there any shopping centers, grocery stores, or restaurants within a reasonable distance from the neighborhood, which we already uh, kind of discussed here. Uh, but I'll show you again, just for those who may have joined us a little bit later uh, in the show. So you actually have the Creek at Nashville River Estates here, but then you can actually go up to Harborview area here through Driver. And this will be your Bridge Road area here on 664, where you actually have a bit of dining here. Right. Uh, as always, places being built up here like Watts uh, is going to be here. Uh, you're going to have your ninja Japanese uh, sushi bar here as well. But then you're going to actually see Buffalo Wild Wings, uh, Texas Roadhouse, Zaxby's, Panera Bread, Kroger. OK, then like I said, then you've got a Walmart over here, Dick's Sporting Goods uh, in Harborview East. Right. So you actually have let's bring up Harborview East for you. So then you have like your Michaels, your Kroger, your Ross, your Dress for Less. But then you come up here, you got your Coles, TJ Maxx, Home Goods, and I'm not even showing it. Okay, well, nobody didn't say anything. Why nobody didn't say anything? Okay, so look, here you go. So you got your Walmart, your Home Goods, TJ Maxx, Coles. Uh, then you got your Sushi Bar, Chick-fil-A, IHOP, Domino's, Texas Roadhouse, Kickback Jacks. Then on this side, you got Kroger, which is a grocery store chain, Michaels here. But then also you got on this side as well, you got Buffalo Wild Wings. Then you have your Indian uh, cuisine here, your Regal Harborview Grand, which is a movie theater there. But then also coming down, you actually have over, let's see, I wanted to show you decoy seafood here. But that's going a little bit too far out because what I wanted you to see is if you are here, you could take that 664 if you haven't listened with me earlier. 
you can come over here and then you had all this access to shopping in this area as well applebee's let me just pull it out a bit here so you'll see this is where you will be staying at in national river uh, estates and then all in this area here which is about like i said about a 10 to 15 minute commute depends on traffic that day but you can actually be in this area as well and be yeah accessing shopping all over applebee's chick-fil-a outback you know and then you actually have a little bit more restaurants up here uh like we talked about at the beginning of the video and that's where you could find shopping at as well too so uh what recreational facilities are parks available in the vicinity of the nasman river estates so we talked about that too when we talked about sleepy hole golf course and we talked about uh basically how you have Venice creek park and that's not too far away as well too uh that'd be here so like if you're looking at i'm gonna show you here i'm gonna share my screen so if you are looking here and you see this is sleepy hole golf course and sleepy hole park here and obviously that's a short ride from here to nasma river estates obviously but then also you have Venice creek park and boat ramp here as well which is like i said another short commute because you come up to 125 and you can actually come up the backside to Venice Creek Park uh, up here as well, too. So you can actually take here and then you can come here and they have a boat ramp. Um, they actually have disc golf as well, too. Um, they actually have um, a lot of things that you can actually utilize in this area as well, too. And then basically you're going if you wanted to go across Bridge Road. Let's show you that a bit here. If You went across Bridge Road which is up here uh, across this uh, see, uh, across this actual part right here going over to Governor's Point. You have the Cedar Point Club here as well, too, which is another golf course here as well. So you have opportunities here in this area to actually check out a lot of amenities in that area. So when it came to actual um, other facilities in the area, I mean, if you come back down here towards uh, from – National River Stage Tour, Central Suffolk, you actually have, which is a little bit further, so that's about a 20-minute commute or so. You will actually have here as well, from that area, you will actually have, I want to make sure you can still see it. Okay, so you will have over here um, the Constance Wharf area as well, too. So if I scroll in over here uh, where your KFC and all that is, you'll see Constance Wharf here. That's where they have boat ramp. They have boat docks here, uh, 18, uh, no, 12, 12 uh, pier dock here for uh, boats as well, too. So you had that down here. And this is a lot more area for shopping and dining as well if you wanted to check it out. So let's talk about um, what's the next question that we have. Um, what are the average prices of homes in Nashville River States? And are there notable trends in the local real estate market? So. This is a great question because so let's just talk about this for a second. Um, what those actually looks like in our opinion. OK, so let's just talk about what the average home in uh, Nasman River actually go. Nasman River States looks like that's a four bedroom, three bath, about thirty two hundred square feet. OK, and typically that's going to give you about a half acre, a little bit more than a half acre of land. And that's going to be about a six hundred and thirty five thousand dollar price point. OK, now. So if you're talking about uh, price per square foot of uh, for what you're actually looking at, that is about one hundred and ninety four dollars per square foot, which is above our average of one hundred and eighty three dollars per square foot in Suffolk, Virginia as a whole. OK, so uh, if you're talking about that, uh, you sale price per square foot typically we're seeing sales prices actually be around six hundred and fifty thousand dollars after they list on the market and that's going to get your sale price per square foot of about 198 dollars per square foot and that is going to give you a, sell, a sales price over list price ratio of about a hundred and three percent in that community okay particularly um Really and truly, we're seeing when those homes list on the market, um, they may typically let, be on the market around 35 days. Uh, but the median average days on market in Nesma River states is about 11 days. And the reason why that days on market on average is about 35 days is because there's new construction still happening in uh, Nesma River states where you still have access to um you know, tidal water uh, behind you or wh whatnot in, in certain parts of the community. Um, and 
this community is going to not always have a higher turnover. And with these being a well more established neighborhood of Nashville River Estates, as Creek River, as the Creek at River, Nashville River Estates is starting to become established and starting to build out more, you're seeing that this community is actually just holding its value so well that you just kind of imagine that the next of these homes are going to actually do quite well too. Now, let's talk about the max home sale price that we've seen recently was a $1.195 million home actually built in Nashville River Estates. Okay. So that was about a $313 per square foot listing as well. So, and that was a five bedroom, four bath, 5,600 square feet home. Okay. So just is something to keep in mind too, that you have such a vast range of home in the area that is going to make it like the smallest home sold in the last year was a four bedroom, two bath, 2,400 square feet home. And that was about a sold price of about 376, 750. Okay. Or about $156 per square foot. So just keep that in mind and talk about those home prices a little bit more. So the next one is how would you describe the overall atmosphere and vibe of the neighborhood? So I think, when it comes to Nazareth River Estates, you are looking, when you are moving to Suffolk, in my opinion, overall, let's not just talk about that community in particular, even though that's what it's about, but just overall in Suffolk, I think that you have to understand that there's not going to be too much of a nightlife here, um, not going to be too much um, thrill seeking here, not going to be too many um, date night opportunities around the city. You're more than likely going to have to travel that 20 to 30 minute commute to whether that's in Chesapeake. Norfolk, Port, uh, or Virginia Beach just depends on what you're looking to do in those cities um, to actually have that good time. Like, uh, I have no problem with a commute uh, to a part of the town, a town of Hampton Roads that I want to go to because I think the flexibility in these in these cities is, is that you can actually get from point A to point B fairly quickly until you're deciding to go over to the peninsula side. That's a whole nother story in itself. But if you're on the south side of Hampton Roads, I think that you have so many opportunities that it shouldn't really matter what part of Hampton Roads that you stay in. But specifically, if you're staying in Suffolk or even in Nashville River Estates, like we've been discussing, you just got to understand that that's going to uh, take you, make you travel out a bit more, especially when there's not public transportation like that. Uh, obviously, you can take Uber, you can take Lyft to these areas as well, too. Um, but you just got to be I keep that in mind as you're thinking about what the vibe is. To me, the vibe is that you want to escape the business of the city day-to-day -day life and you want to be somewhere where you have a lot more land a lot more lot size a lot more home to do the things that you want to do within your home and in your community uh, they don't require you to always have to worry about what's going on around the city because you just know that it's that peace and serenity that you're kind of looking for in the area okay so that's just one of those things that i would um pay attention to um as you uh go for as well too so now, let's talk about uh, local health care facilities, including hospital clinics and medical centers near Nashville River Estates. OK, so when it comes to the that part of town or uh, health care facilities, uh, you have some notable options like you have uh, Bond Secure, Centera Obichi Hospital in central uh, Suffolk. Bond Secure is in Harborview area. And then you have various clinics and medical offices throughout uh, Suffolk as well, too. So. All that can be uh, to cover emergency care, specialized treatments, and then even maybe some of your routine checkups as well, too. Now, if you're a military service member, they do have a TRICARE facility in the area as well, too, over by Nasma River Estates. So you still have coverage as well, too, where you don't have to typically travel back to Virginia Beach, Norfolk Naval Station, Portsmouth. You can have your your pharmacy stuff be sent over there. You can pick it up over there as well, too. So. Those are all our questions. I appreciate you all hanging with us and having this 35 minute discussion or so on things about Norfolk, uh, about the Nasman River Estates area and moving to Norfolk and Suffolk in the surrounding uh, seven cities. Now, if you found value in this content, definitely hit us with a like. Definitely comment down below and leave us with some more information that you are considering or things that you may want to know about moving to Suffolk. And in relation to Nashville River Estates as well, too. Uh, catch us with a video every week. Going to be releasing at least every Wednesday. You will get at least one video a week, if not more. And definitely go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and bang the notification bell so that way you can be the first to learn more about moving to Suffolk 
and like living in Norfolk and the surrounding communities each and every time we drop a new video. You can be the first to learn more about that. If you ever need help moving to the city or you're thinking about moving to the city and you want to see it, what we can do to help you, whether that's moving in two weeks or moving in 120 days, we have your best interest at heart and we will be glad to help you make a smooth move to Norfolk or any one of the surrounding seven cities by giving us a call, an email, a text, or even booking a video call because we love talking to each and every single one of you every chance that we get. We appreciate all the time that you spend with us today. We'll catch you in the next video. Y'all stay safe. Peace.